All right, let's get to it. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Tundra. This is Tundra Fight School. Today, we're going over a, a buoyancy system. I had somebody in Discord yesterday ask me about, you know, uh, uh, intersecting meshes or something like that. I think they were trying to build out a buoyancy system, and I was like, well, that's interesting, but that sounds like really hard to do intersecting meshes and stuff uh, to come up with, like, uh, volumes to calculate buoyancy. Uh, sounds terrible. Um, so I came up with a system I thought uh, a little outside the box, maybe, I don't know, um, but uh, a particle-based system. So here we've got a cube uh, meant to represent water. It's really just a trigger. I don't interact with it. Uh, most objects don't have any reason to interact with it or anything like that. So it's just, just literally a, a, a trigger object. Uh, but some things do. I've got these buoyancy particles configured uh, on this object, for example. It's a thousand, um, a, th it's a thousand particles in this cube. And they're configured to interact with the water cube, right? So they turn red when they go underwater, right? So because I've got um, all these particles that are interacting with this trigger, uh, I can calculate... Um, you know, a, a buoyancy force based on the location of all these different little particles. Um, and I can also do things like a, like a drag force. And the more particles that hit the water, the more drag that the object gets. And so you end up with a really cool buoyancy system uh, based on these particles. Now, you might think that's expensive computationally, but the, the way that the particles work, um, they're relatively cheap and... Um, when you do the, if you do a callback, like a like a trigger callback um, for the particles, you get you get a you get an array of all the particles that got triggered, um, and so all you have to do is like quickly loop through the array, sum all of the locations together, um, divide by the uh, the number of of activated particles, and you've got an average location um, for. Uh, the activated particles. You can then just add a single add force at that location and you've got, poof, a buoyancy system. You've got a drag system and it's really, really cool. And it's relatively lightweight. Like I said, there's a thousand particles here and it doesn't really, uh, it's nothing's bogging down at this point. Um, I've got some other objects. This one's really neat because I've got it visualized. I've got some other objects that, uh, that don't have the particles visualized, uh, uh, but they're uh, just to make it cheaper, but they're um, they're cool also. So the objects don't have to float. Here's like a six pack. Um, here's like a six pack uh, that's that's neutrally buoyant. So it's just going to kind of stay wherever it is because um, the buoyancy is balanced out. And uh, and so that's kind of cool. Let me break it apart. Er, there we go. Okay, so now I've got some individual cans I can play with. All right, so does it scale? I think it does. Um, so here is a ridiculous object. This is um, this is the chain that I've been playing with. This one, however, is is um, is like wooden, so it floats, right? So we've got. The chain object here, if I get a little closer, you can actually see the individual buoyancy particles associated with each and every link. So this particular version has, I think it's 10 particles per link, which is still kind of a ridiculous number. You could do it with way less than that. Um, but again, we're kind of testing scale along with this as well. So this is 100 links in the chain, uh, 10 each. So this is another 1,000 particles. Um, and we get this cool uh, floating chain on top of the water cool effect. That's pretty pretty slick. Uh, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, considering I was just asked about this yesterday and I mocked this up like super fast as a proof of concept. I'm really, really happy with how, how, how nice it's come out. Uh, here, let's drop this on the chain and you can just kind of see how... Uh, different objects will continue to interact with each other. The fact that they're in the water cube doesn't really matter. Some are affected by it because of the buoyancy particles and others are not. Um, and it's just really, really slick. 
So let me know what you guys think. I think it's pretty, pretty darn cool. Oh, I've got one more thing to show. Um, well, a couple things here. Try to check this out. Um, if you happen to have one of these standing cubes of water, um, then you should be able to pr produce an endless amount of energy with this cool perpetual motion machine. So find yourself some, uh, a cube of standing water and, uh, and, and you'll be, you'll be rich. <laughs> okay. That's silly. Um, oh, here's something extra silly. I can spawn some, uh, some, <laughs> well, let me just do it. Duckies. <laughs> no no water is complete without rubber ducks to play with right so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the video this is pretty much it me playing in a standing cube of water with my chains and my duckies and and my six pack and all that so uh hope you guys enjoyed it try it out see if you like it um or try it out in your own systems. Uh, the, the concept is, like I said, using, leveraging the particle system to do cool things. Um, so this might not be the best, most efficient way to do, um, to do a buoyancy system, but it seems to be relatively effective, like really effective and, and relatively cheap, um, considering how many um, particles we're dealing with here. Uh, like each, every one of these ducks is like 150 particles. Um, this can is like a hundred, a hundred particles. Um, the chain, like I said, is anyway, you get the idea. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care. Talk to you later.